Hello and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson, your host for the next half hour. We have a lot in store for you, including how to limit your risk for colon cancer and ensuring the proper usage of our roads. The magazine starts right now. Colon cancer is cancer of the large bowel. The large bowel is that area of the bowel which contains the waste products. Whenever you have colon cancer, it means that those cells are growing uncontrollably. And it's something that is very serious. It is a condition which you have to diagnose early and so we can manage it appropriately. Once we diagnose colon cancer, the next step is to stage it. We want to know if it's confined to the colon or if it's outside the colon. So you're likely to have a CAT scan of the abdomen, a special x-ray, an x-ray of the chest, and some blood tests. We can use that information to decide if it's localized or if it's very involved. And that can help us to plan what your treatment is going to be. Good day, I'm Carrie Ann Smith and this is your GIS News from Monday, March 27. The newly refurbished operating theatres at the Falmouth Hospital will soon be ready to take cases from the Cornwall Regional Hospital, which is still being affected by environmental health issues. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton recently viewed the refurbished facilities, which have increased the hospital's capacity from one to four operating theatres. Which is a, an extremely positive thing for a hospital with just about 100 beds or so. In addition to that, we have retrofitted and will now commission a, a, a new ICU unit that will have three pediatric and three adult um, cases at its maximum capacity, which again is very important for the post-operative care. He says the re-roofing of an old infrastructure on the compound will add another 20 beds, which will also help to take the pressure off Cornwall Regional. In addition, 22 of the 36 social cases who occupied beds at that hospital have been moved to the Falmouth Infirmary, while remaining cases will be moved soon. To date, all clinics at the Cornwall Regional Hospital, except OBGYN, have been relocated to the West Jamaica Conference Centre. The OBGYN clinic is at the Barnet Health Centre. Meanwhile, the University of the West Indies and the University of Technology are to collaborate on a case study on the Cornwall Regional Hospital. The two institutions were invited by Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton to carry out the work in their respective fields and write a paper to influence maintenance services and a general upkeep for healthcare facilities. Dr. Tufton says the study will provide an assessment of existing challenges and best practices and make proposals for improvement. If they can do some research on this for me, for us as a country, and they can put forward some proposals and best practices and policy, I intend to take that to Cabinet. I intend to table it in Parliament, I intend to use it to engage a national discussion and frankly speaking where necessary or possible to use it to influence policy direction. Minister Tufton was speaking while on a recent tour of the West Jamaica Conference Centre. Jamaica now has a criminal bench book which will better aid trial judges in directing juries in criminal cases. This bench book will save judicial time in the preparation of summations and assist in the delivery of consistently predictable, accurate and clear directions to the jury. Pointing out that a significant feature of the trial process is the communication between judges and jurors, Justice Minister Delroy Chuck says the book's guidelines will go a far way in reducing errors. But probably the most important contribution that this bench book will make is towards ensuring the constitutional protection of the law the right to a fair trial to which every Jamaican is entitled. The criminal bench book was developed by the government of Jamaica with the funding provided by the United Kingdom Foreign and Commonwealth Office. National Security Minister Robert Montague has continued his series of consultative meetings with various stakeholders to update them and receive feedback on government's crime strategy. 
Most recently, the minister met with former heads of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and Jamaica Defence Force. The meeting included former police commissioners Lucius Thomas, Rear Admiral Harley Lewin and Owen Ellington. JDF Chiefs of Staff Major General Robert Nish and Rear Admiral Hardy Lewin, as well as Chiefs of Defense Staff Major General Stuart Saunders and Major General Anthony Anderson were also in attendance. Former Police Commissioner Dr. Carl Williams and former Chief of Staff Rear Admiral Peter Brady were reportedly off the island at the time of the meeting. The National Security Minister says the discussions with those in attendance were open, frank and instructive. The former security chiefs were briefed on the Five Pillar Crime Strategy and discussed the issues of drugs, gangs and lottery scamming. The security heads shared several suggestions, which Minister Montague has said he welcomes. And finally, the National Water Commission, NWC, is appealing to the public for full cooperation as it begins its customer census mapping project in Kingston and St. Andrew. The project, which started today, is being conducted through the NWC's Geographic Information System, GIS Department. It is the first leg of what is intended to be an island-wide initiative. NWC staff will be doing a door-to-door -door survey of existing and potential customers who will be mapped using GPS-enabled Android devices. The census mapping will allow the Commission to more effectively update its customer database, detect billing irregularities more quickly, and better locate and monitor services to different categories of customer accounts. The Water Commission says the goal is to provide better service delivery and customer service. The census will be conducted between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. each day for approximately five months within Kingston and St. Andrew. Among the first areas to benefit are Kasha Park, Corville Gardens, Harborview, Manly Meadows, Manor Park, Norbrook, sections of Hope Road and sections of Constant Spring Road. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Carrie Ann Smith. Thanks for watching. Let's get a little breeze on this land. All right. Now let's get some bounce in the rhythm. All right. <laughs> let's get some fire on our hearts. Now that is what we call all right. Run, come, get some Jamaica. Service Excellence Awards National Champion in the individual category is Simone Fox. Tourism Service Excellence Awards National Champion in the organization category goes to Couple Sansouci. The massage therapist and the 150 suite romantic resort captured the overall titles in the reintroduced Tourism Service Excellence Program Awards. The Tourism Service Excellence Program TSEP Awards was held recently in St. James. It was introduced in 2008 and later shelved for four years until Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett announced its return last year. It is the people of Jamaica that has made this industry what it is and therefore we should not hesitate at all in extolling their virtues and in rewarding them for the work that they have done. So the TSEP Awards, with all its glitz and fanfare, was reintroduced under the management of the Tourism Product Development Company, with support from the Tourism Enhancement Fund and private entities. Nominations for the awards were accepted from the accommodation subsector, attractions, ground transport and tour operators, craft artisans, customs and immigration officers, and red cap porters, to name a few. The winners were selected from 150 nominees. It began with the regional winners. The individual finalists included a tour guide from Kingston. Just like what Bob Marley would say, Irie. It made me feel Irie. Negril-based scuba diving instructor, 
customs officer from Montego Bay, hotel lifeguard in Port Antonio, and a spa therapist in Ocho Rios. The regional winners among organizations were Jamaica Pegasus for Kingston, Couples San Susi for Ocho Rios, Negril's Sunset at the Palms Resort, Trident Hotel for Port Antonio, Appleton Estate Rum Tour on the South Coast, and VIP attractions in Montego Bay. Simone Folks' road to individual island champion for tourism service excellence began with her employment in the housekeeping department at Sandals four years ago and evolved with her promotion to spa therapist. The nominees, they were all exceptional and amazing and just to be a nominee meant so much. Imagine to win the for the resort area, I am blown away and I now know I am capable of so much and I am ready to take on everything. Couple San Susi won the organization title from an illustrious list of nominees. They make me feel extremely, extremely happy. Uh, not for myself only, uh, you know, as an individual, but uh, for the entire team, for the entire workers of Couple San Susi. They are extremely happy uh, to be able to be recognized to be the national champion. We are looking at ensuring that tourism becomes an avocation rather than a transition activity. So you don't come to tourism on your way to somewhere else. You come to tourism for a vocation with an income arrangement and a mobility and transitional activity that enables you to develop a career path. So you can be assured of sustainable employment in an industry which is a sustainable industry. We Jamaicans are a hard-working set of people and we at the GIS know this. That's why after a hard day's work you can simply pop onto our website jis.gov.jm and be in the know with government news and information. JIS, your information hub. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. It's the last Monday in March which we have been observing as Colon Cancer Awareness Month. Here's a refresher video on not only the warning signs and symptoms, but also how you can actively limit your risk for developing the disease. The gastrointestinal tract is a system of organs working together to support the human body. It takes food, digests it, absorbs energy and nutrients, and then removes waste through urine and feces. The esophagus, stomach, pancreas, liver, and colon are all part of this system, and studies show that cancer of these vital organs are becoming increasingly common in Jamaica. One of the leading causes of death among Jamaican men and women is colon cancer. Cancer does not discriminate. It's the third most common cause of cancer-related death among Jamaican men and women. But like most lifestyle-related illnesses, you have the power to reduce your risk of developing colon cancer as well as prevent it from occurring. An unhealthy diet, smoking, obesity, alcohol use, all increase one's risk for colon cancer. Everyone is at some risk for colon cancer because everyone has a colon. But some individuals are at higher risk for colon cancer depending on, for example, their diet or lifestyle. So a diet which is very high in processed meat, a diet which is high in fat, a diet which is low in fiber, these all increase your risk for colon cancer. Other risk factors include persons with pre-existing medical conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease and ulcerative colitis. The risk level of persons with these diseases increases after 10 years. Therefore, active screening is a necessity. 
Unfortunately, signs and symptoms of colon cancer often mimic other diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome. That's why it's crucial that there's early screening. So visit your doctor if you experience dark or bloody stool, rectal bleeding, diarrhea, constipation, bowel incontinence or narrowing of the stool that goes beyond a few days, belly pain, anemia, vomiting or unexplained weight loss. You can develop a screening protocol in an individual depending on their risk. It's recommended that colon cancer screening start between the ages of 45 and 50 years old. The simplest screening tool is a stool test for blood at a local laboratory. So this is not you looking to see if there's blood in the stool. This is you going to your doctor at the appropriate age. Your doctor sends you to the lab to get a stool sample tested to see if there is a microscopic amount of blood. This is the first sign usually that there is something called a polyp inside the colon. So the polyp is what's known as a precancerous stage. So it's not cancer itself, but we do know that a significant number of cancers will develop in individuals who have had a polyp. And the objective is to find the polyp and remove it before it gets a chance to become cancerous. If a polyp is found, the next step in the screening process would involve a colonoscopy. In this procedure, a doctor would place a small camera into the bowel to check for the polyp and remove it if present. We can do other screening tests. The PRM enema is not as popular anymore, but it's still possible and it's accessible and available, which is an X-ray involving some dye inside the bowel as well to look to see if there's anything growing there. A CT scan of the bowel can also be done as a screening tool to look to see if you have any polyps, which can then be removed at colonoscopy. Outside of screening for the colon, um, you may also want to try and reduce your risk by modifying your lifestyle. So stopping smoking, reducing your alcohol consumption, and um, eliminating processed meat in the diet are all important risk factors which can be modified to reduce the risk of colon cancer. If you are watching the JIS, you're always in the know when it comes to government information and news. Keep watching, keep informed, and tell your friends. JIS, your number one source for government info. We have been examining GIS data, that is hotspot crash data. And we now know clearly where the, the high probability accident roads are. And I've given some directives to the NWA for them to take steps to put in place safety measures to reduce accidents on these high crash roads. We have given a policy nod to the use of electronic monitoring, electronic surveillance, and ticketing systems. And the NWA is now testing various systems to see which is the best to deploy. And that, I'm certain, Mr. Speaker, will improve enforcement and reduce fatalities on the road. So this is an action that the government is taking in preserving life. Let me implore motorists to reduce speed, obey the rules of the road, drive defensively, and be courteous and considerate to others, and do not drive while under the influence of drugs, alcohol, or cell phones. We support Prime Minister Andrew Holness's call. Watch this next feature and find out why road distractions could mean the difference between life and death. A motorist's ability to fully concentrate on the road is extremely important. Anything that requires a shift in focus should be avoided. Smoking for one, drinking alcohol. The drinking thing, I come from party and frost, 
that no worth it to dog. Mechanics man drive, is what I say? If we are going to turn your radio up to a point where you can't hear anything around you, you're essentially deaf. How are you going to hear when an ambulance is coming through a red light, trying to get someone to the hospital or a fire truck? You're going to drive into the intersection and create an accident. You can get distracted just about anyhow. You know, but yeah, because putting something in your mouth, you can just bop your eye and, you know, in space of a second, you are alive and others. Reading newspapers is a no-no. You cannot be reading and driving at the same time. It's a no-no. There's a loud music coming from some of these vehicles. Um, also, the way the public passenger vehicles drive, you have to be on the lookout for them at all times. Something happened, like an accident happened, everybody slow down to look what is happening. I've often been concerned about some of these very bright billboards that they put up at the driver's eye level. Often times so bright that you can't even see the traffic light from the billboard. The traffic environment is a busy one. Road users, drivers especially, have to be concerned with everything that is happening around them. But sometimes they engage in activities that limit their ability to be fully alert or react appropriately to situations. Driving distractions amount to anything that requires a driver to take his or her hands and eyes off the steering wheel or the road. Studies have shown that distracted drivers are setting themselves up for varying calamities. Drivers who use handheld devices are four times as likely to get into crashes serious enough to injure them. Using a cell phone while driving, whether it's handheld or hands-free, delays a driver's reaction as much as having a blood alcohol concentration at the legal limit of 0.08%. A driver sending a text message only has about 9% control of the steering wheel and the vehicle at the given time. Being distracted causes drivers to react more slowly to traffic conditions or events, such as another vehicle stopping or making a left turn or pulling out from a side road. Distracted drivers fail more often to notice or recognize potential hazards, including pedestrians, bicycles or debris on the road. While these statistics are mainly from the United States, the situation in Jamaica is no less alarming, and authorities are taking note. If it is that you are not familiar enough with your device that you can use it, find a play button without having to look at the device and take your eyes off the road and take your attention off the road, then don't use it. Set it before you start your journey, have your playlist ready and continue on your journey. If you need to pay attention to it, pull off. It takes 25 seconds the most. Address your device, get the music you want to listen to and continue on your way. It is more important that you pull over because sometimes the time you take to answer the phone, you're focusing on what you're hearing and not even pay, and paying attention to the, to, the, to, the, to the road. Consultation is taking place here in Jamaica about a law to ban the use of cell phones while driving by imposing fines and other sanctions. In the meantime, drivers of public passenger vehicles should not use cellular phones while driving. Not ban altogether if they use the earpiece fine as long as their hands are free to do the controls of the car. Not really ban it, but a, a person himself must, must be more conscious, uh, more, more conscious knowing that, all right, we have people in other vehicle, or may I protect myself and other people at the same time? Yes, because my sister was, um, was hit by a car, and it was by somebody who was actually driving and using his cell phone, didn't see her crossing. So I'm totally against it. You know, I, I believe that there should be more that is done to prevent people from doing that. Sometimes it's dangerous, depends on how you use it. Because sometimes you can be driving, you know, and get an emergency call, and you have to take that call. And sometimes people just depend on BB, uh, um, text, which don't make no sense. They can just wait. When they matter, they not look for nobody. They don't, they don't even know where they might drive. I think it is necessary, um, given the fact that if you look at the US statistics, 330,000 persons are injured every year because of persons using the phone while driving. Um, it makes you 10 times more likely to be in an accident. So from simply the, the standpoint of protecting life and property, it is necessary. 
I don't think they should ban it. I, they, they could have been some regulation where you use an earpiece or something. Because if everybody have to pull over when you get a phone call, you're going to have chaos on the road. You understand? So if you use an earphone, that could work. Using earphones or hands-free kits may allow a driver to still maintain control of the vehicle with his or her hands. But a driver's best bet is to refrain from using them altogether, as their focus will now largely be placed on the conversation. While cell phones may be the most common distractions, a host of other things may lead persons to take their attention off the road. Here are some general tips to deal with them. Plan your route beforehand to avoid getting lost or focusing on navigational systems such as GPS. Ensure that children use child seats and seat belts to prevent them roaming in motor vehicles. Turn down the volume of music played in vehicles. Refrain from texting, emailing, answering phones or attending to pages while driving or walking. Avoid reading while driving, whether newspapers, billboards or other advertisements. Do not watch television or DVDs in your car while driving. Avoid multitasking, such as combing your hair or applying makeup while driving. Have your meal before beginning your journey to eliminate the need to eat while driving. And keep conversations with other passengers to a minimum. At all times, remember that you are ultimately responsible for your safety and that of others. Have you been a victim of sexual assault? Have you been raped? It doesn't matter if you're a boy, girl, man or woman. There's a team of personnel willing and capable to assist you on the path to justice. The Victim Services Division. They provide support of all kinds, such as free, confidential counseling and assistance to attend court. You may not forget the ordeal, but the healing process will be easier. In any one year, more than 10,000 people get assistance. Don't hang your head in shame. Being a victim of a sex crime is not your fault. Contact the Victim Services Division. They're based at 47E Old Hope Road, Kingston 5. For our men and women. Equality. A message from the Bureau of Gender Affairs and Dispute Resolution Foundation, paid for by the UN Women Fund for Gender Equality. And that's where we close today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Be sure to join us tomorrow around the same time on this station. We maintain a strong online presence, so be sure to connect on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or our trusted website, jis.gov.jm. There's also a mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.